Welcome back. You're still with us on Startup Street. Google unveiled a suite of tools and initiatives aimed at empowering India's AI innovators at the recently held Google I.O. Connect in Bengaluru 2024. Speaking to CNBC TV 18's Ritu Singh on the sidelines of the event, Google DeepMind Senior Director Seshu Ajarappu and Director Manish Gupta said that Google was in the early stages of an AI platform shift and that India is well positioned to lead this revolution. Take a look. Yeah, I'd say in a very significant fashion. I would say the first thing is there are 1.5 million developers that use our Gemini models in the world. Right? Most of them use these models through our AI studio. And India features prominently in our AI studio user base. So that's one thing. So we can't like, advance these models without working with the Indian developers. The second thing I would say is India offers a rich you know, field to work with in terms of multimodal, multilingual, and mobile first. Multimodal in the sense of Indians communicate with these agents in a much more uh, diverse fashion than other users do, we notice. Multilingual, I mean, which other country offers the, the rich linguistic landscape more so than India? And then Indian users have always been ahead in the mobile revolution. Well, I'm happy to hear that. But uh, Manish, to get more specific to India, what do you make the, uh, of the pace at which Indian companies, India is adopting AI, and especially generative AI, which has been the buzzword. We've all had a crash course, uh, you know, whether we like it or not in the last couple of years. But what are some of the challenges and opportunities that you find that are unique to the India market? Yeah, so A, first of all, it is very heartening to see so many companies now, startups, beginning to utilize Gen AI. India, we tend to be very multimodal. Hmm. In, in our behavior. Yeah. Uh, we are not just like happy to just type questions. We yeah. like uh, like communicating with the systems through voice. Hmm. We, uh, in fact, Google Lens has a lot of usage in India because hmm. we like showing pictures and yeah. so on. Uh, and the, such a rich diversity of languages that we speak. So it's been, again, wonderful to see so many startups beginning to build LLMs that will understand Indian languages very well. Mm. Of course, my own team is at the forefront of a lot of these contributions, which mm. we are both making to our own products, to Google's Gemma models, as yeah. well as we are contributing data sets and benchmarks right, mm. to the community. Mm. Things like the Varni data set, yeah. uh, things like this Indic bench, yeah. which is a new benchmark covering 29 Indian languages. So yeah. we don't just think in terms of, OK, only a few or a qu all 22 scheduled languages. Our goal is to cover languages uh, speak spoken by each and every in each and every corner of India. So, you know, in terms of some of the use cases that are specific to India and its requirements in healthcare, education, and some of the critical sectors. So, I mean, Google DeepMind's mission is to advance AI and benefit humanity. Mm. Right? There is no benefiting humanity without thinking of the canonical, canonical problems of our time, mm. which are climate control, um, energy scarcity, mm. disease and you know, disease understanding and drug delivery. Mm. So we work in all those areas. We have like deep projects in each of these, but mm. these are out there a little bit longer term. But we are making advances in all of these areas that will benefit definitely the Indian ecosystem. Mm. I would also mention there are models like Learn LM, yeah. uh, Med LM, mm. where we are taking some of these very advanced capabilities that Gemini has, right? These multimodal capabilities, mm. and really now achieving transformative impact on some of these solutions. So we've been partnering with the likes of Apollo Healthcare okay. in India, yeah. where we have licensed a lot of these models, right? To to uh, companies like Apollo and let them build solutions, right? That will do early screening for various forms of cancer. You're also working with the Ministry of Electronics and IT uh, to support 10,000 startups, uh, you know, in their mission towards uh, being more AI ready. Just tell us a bit about that program and how you're helping these startups. Yes. So we have committed to a working with the MIT on training at least 10,000 startups on AI technologies. We've taken all of these programs that we have had like startup school and so on and making them AI first. We have started to provide cloud credits uh, including up to $350,000 in cloud credit to eligible AI startups okay. to get them uh, again the compute that they need uh, as well as rolling out new programs like AI hackathon, uh, AI bootcamp to again get people both skilled, give them access to all of these wonderful tools. What you would like to see from the government? Yeah, so I think the, the way I think of this is the exceptional promise of AI requires exceptional care. And regulation is a big part of that uh, exceptional care. 
So we don't wait for the governments to regulate us. We self-regulate us. We published AI principles many years ago, and we update them every, every quarter. We've, done, we've conducted hundreds of reviews internally to make sure that we're getting it right. We think of regulators as friends, and we try to influence you know, regulation so that we do this in a proper fashion. No, I think the, the, the one thing I would say is like, you can't do this kind of regulation in isolation. You have to work with the companies in coming, them to, coming up with proper uh, you know, regulations together. So I'd say I'd encourage them to work with us. And with that, it is a wrap on this edition of Startup Street. More news and updates coming up on the other side. Stay tuned.